Hey everyone, um, a quick Friday night video, um, pretty uh, lazy evening, finished the end of the work week, but uh, I came home and reviewed some of the comments from uh, some of our subscribers with some questions about the Foresight uh, software, the FSX software, um, in regards to club data screen and dual monitors. So the, this video is going to be as quick as I can possibly make it, but uh, I thought instead of commenting and replying to some of the comments, uh, and I get quite a few of them, uh, from a recent video in regards to the, the simulator bay walkthrough, um, one of my side screens has the club data screen from the GC Quad locked on and on pretty much for the full 45 minutes. So I'm going to show people how I lock that screen open versus the time delay that you can set in the settings to turn the club data screen on and off. So typically inside the settings of FSX uh, 2020, the club data screen you can have on for three seconds with an auto shut off, uh, five, seven, and 10 seconds. Um, no options greater than that. And obviously there's zero, so you can turn it to zero and you won't see that club data screen at all. But um, I'll show you a way that you can lock that screen on easily with the right click of a, a left click of a mouse button. And uh, then from there, I'm going to walk through on how you set up dual monitor software. Um, some of you guys might be really across this and this video wouldn't be for you, but uh, there are quite a few questions that I get from time to time from YouTube subscribers. So to start the video, uh, just so I can get the club data screen up on uh, my multi or my dual monitor here, I'm going to hit a quick shot and then I'm going to sit down and we'll show you how I lock open that screen uh, automatically. Um, currently, I just so I didn't have to deal with too many monitors inside the simulator bay for this scenario, I'm going to have the club data screen come up on my impact um, off my projector. Normally, I wouldn't, I'd have the club data coming off of the TV, but uh, I'm going to get lost kind of moving back and forth through the videos here or through the different monitors. So first things first, let's hit a golf shot. So we get a golf shot away. And then as soon as our club data screen comes on, what you want to do is you want to quickly quick click on one of the components of the club data screen and it'll instantly zoom you in. And you can click on the club, you can click on the ball, you can zoom into basically the impact area, any of the areas that you choose. Um, before it gets through the cycle time to shut off this screen, you want to quickly left click on your mouse on any of the screen, any area of the screen, and it'll just zoom in. Once you've zoomed in, you can quickly left click again, it'll zoom out, and this screen will now remain open for as long as your computer is running, as long as the, uh, the software, the FSX software is running. It will not close on a time shut off. So that's as simple as it is. That's how you keep the screen open. Um, I use it from time to time when people will be sitting inside the simulator bay. I'll come in and uh, while well, they're hitting some golf shots and we want to pause the screen because the seven seconds by default that I leave it on, um, or the 10 maximum length that you can leave it on automatically isn't enough to analyze to explain to people some of the, um, the details around the club data. So again, quick left click with the mouse anywhere on this screen. It'll zoom in and then just left click again to zoom out and this screen will stay locked on as it is currently right now. So just that easy. So let's talk about how do we set up dual monitor screens. Well, let's exit out of this um, to go back in. And before we get into the dual monitors, let's just hit one more golf shot to show you the auto on and off. So we hit our golf shot. I'm not gonna use the mouse this time. I'm just gonna leave it as is. It's going to cycle through and I currently have uh, these screens turned on. I think this might be set up at a seven second interval in the settings and it's automatically going to shut off. And that's typically what people are trying to stop right there because the seven, the five, the 10 second uh, turn off time for that screen sometimes isn't enough to uh, analyze the data and I get it. So there's the simple fix for you. So how do we set up the dual monitors and how do you shift the club data or um, change where you want your um, data or your actual practice facility to be coming up on which monitor. So we're going to get into the settings and we'll show you that. So to start out, let's talk about the settings themselves. So in the on-screen data, this is where you're changing the shot data and that's what I mean by the club analysis screen. I currently have it set at five seconds. You have the option for zero, so it won't come on at all. 
you have the option for three second uh, time delay before the screen shuts off, five seconds, seven seconds, and 10 seconds. I typically use it at five. And I also have the flight screen on. That's the original screen that you saw at the start. And currently right now I have the video analysis or the swing analysis turned off. Um, if I want the video analysis turned on, I could come here to three seconds, turn it on, I'll hit apply. We'll exit out of the settings. Let's just hit a golf shot and now you'll see my swing analysis if I have it all turned on. So I'll hit a quick shot. <clears throat> And there we go. We're, just because we turned that uh, swing analysis on for three seconds, it quickly moved into the flight analysis for five seconds. It's going to go to the club analysis for five seconds and off. And away we go. And that's where we change those settings is inside uh, settings, on-screen data. And uh, we'll go back and turn our video swing analysis off. Um, flight is on for three, club is on for five. And if I choose to, I could have the table on. So that's where we get it. That's the information. If those are your stock settings that I currently leave them on, if I wanted none of that, I can just uncheck this box, hit apply, and it'll show me no screens. Just let me see the range. So pretty quick, pretty simple. So how do you turn, um, how do you turn the dual monitors on? Basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna go into graphics, into the graphics setting. Um, typically you have your main display set up to, in my case, uh, it'll be the projector and how the extra monitor gets added is you enable dual display and once you've enabled it you'll actually see this tab appear without dual display being on you can see the the dual tab options has completely disappeared so get into graphics highlight enable dual display hit apply and now we get that tab back dual display tab we can get into dual display tab we can pick which monitor we want to choose um, main monitor and that's your choice you're gonna have to play around with the window settings as well and what I mean by the window settings is let's just get into here quickly so inside the window settings in system you're gonna get the options to uh, add extended monitors inside of the window settings so let's just make this screen a little bit bigger so we can talk about it for a minute so I currently have my, my monitors, I have three stacked up on each other. So first step is get into the window settings and let's go and turn on extended display. Make sure those are extended. Uh, come in here for my purposes, uh, screen two I have as my main monitor and it is ticked as that's my main display monitor. And uh, once you've picked your main display monitor and my projector, so this is my big 75 inch TV here. This is my little 32 inch monitor and this is my impact screen or my projector. So when I drag my cursor from one side to the other, it's uh, going to drag and drop files. Most people are pretty familiar with this setting, but you do have to have extended display and dual monitor set up in the Windows settings. So pretty simple. You've got to have uh, a little bit of knowledge in, in the Windows settings there. and. Uh, get that set up. So let's turn our display off. So that's where we're picking which monitor is which. Display monitor, main monitor, like I said, is display number two. I'll go back here for a second, back to our window settings. And how do I identify them? I'm gonna come in here and identify which screen is which. And that tells me main monitor number two is my, in my preference, the main monitor. So we've picked our main monitor, main display, that's display number two. I'll set the resolution up to my preference. And then uh, secondary monitor that you're gonna have, in my case, the club data showing up, I'll set it as display three. And I, you have the options, so let's uh, zoom out. Get in here, you have the options to choose which monitors you, you would uh, you prefer, one, two, or three. So you'll have to play around with that a little bit. And then how do you determine where your, your practice data should go and where your analysis, this is the analysis for the video uh, swing analysis, the club data, or the mini map is basically the options here. So you're gonna get to choose where your analysis screen is gonna go. 
and just bear with me, I'm kind of running a few extra screens here. So for my case, my club analysis is on my main monitor. So the main monitor is the one that you're seeing inside the swing cam. Let's just back up, quickly hit. So this is uh, where my club analysis right now at the minute is going to be displaying. there we go that's where all of the club data club analysis is going to show up and then let's uh, come back into our screen capture here turn on our 32 inch monitor I'm going to come back to the settings and I no longer want it I no longer want it displaying on my impact screen, my club data. So what I'm going to do is get back into the settings, go to my uh, dual display option, and under analysis, instead of having it tick boxed under main monitor, I'm going to choose secondary monitor. Click secondary monitor, hit apply, exit out, and now you're going to see my practice monitor on the side here pull up my club data. You won't see the club data anymore on this uh, projector screen. So there we go. Projector screen's off. You're seeing it in the, in the foreground here. And then the club data is reading off my little 32 inch monitor on the side of my simulator bay. So that's how you go in. That's how you change the settings and uh, choose where your data is going to go and where it's going to come from. Minimap, you have the options to have the minimap on the main monitor like I do, the minimap here in the corner on my main impact screen. I can have it, the minimap show up on my secondary screen. Today my secondary screen is the small 32 inch monitor on the wall or I could have it on both, both the impact screen and both the 32 inch monitor. Practice data you can have only on the main screen and the secondary screen and then the analysis you can have either or on the main or the secondary. And of course, how do you change the time limits on those screens right here in the on-screen data? Come through and adjust. These are all in seconds on how long that screen will stay open. So I hope that helps. We tried to keep the video as quick as possible. I'm hoping that my rambling didn't confuse anyone. Um, if it's somewhat confusing, Please put some comments below and um, I'll get back to you and try to explain it a little bit better. Uh, perhaps just uh, review the video once or twice and uh, it'll all start to make sense once you start playing around with the settings. Anyway, thanks for watching. If you haven't already subscribed, please, please subscribe. If you like the video, if you like the little educational tutorial here with the uh, Foresight Sports FSX software settings, uh, please thumbs up and good night. Have a good weekend. Mm-hmm. <clears throat>